From the Tie Cats Audio Network, this is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tie Cats Today here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. I'm Braden Neville here on this Tuesday, June the 13th, 2023. The Tie Cats held day zero of practice today. That's right, day zero. They have that longer than usual gap between games, nine days to be exact. They play this Sunday in Toronto against the Argos, and this will be the Argos' first home game and first season game of the year after they had that bye week in week one to kick off the year, kind of straying away from that usual Grey Cup rematch we're used to seeing in week one. They didn't have that this year as the Argos had that first week by week. Today I spoke to Casey Sales, the man who used to play for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and switched sides for Friday's game, joining the Hamilton Ticats. We talked to him about returning to Winnipeg and getting to play a little bit of O-line, somewhere he's not used to playing, but When duty called, he came to action. Now, I also chatted with Duke Williams, who made his debut for the Cats in that game Friday. And I also had a long sit-down chat with Terry Godwin, who started his first season opener. Before we get to those guys, the Ticats had some announcements today, releasing they signed two players, defensive lineman Jared Hewitt, a former third-team All-ACC lineman who has spent the last two seasons with the Seahawks practice squad. And they also signed Tyreek McAllister, who's He's a bit of a Swiss Army knife. I saw him in practice today. I was happy with what I saw from that very small sample size. And a guy who can do both receiver and running back. He can play both on offense. He spent the last two seasons with Denver in the NFL. And as usual, with signings comes releases. And the Ticats released defensive lineman Niles Pickney and Kwaku Botang. I caught up with Coach O just to discuss those new signings, the extended wait for this week's game, and more. Uh, so, Coach... Nine days between games, do you feel like that's beneficial maybe for some guys to heal up a bit or to get more time to prepare for the next game? I think rest is always a benefit to the football team, to the coaches. We've been on the go since, you know, the end of the end of training camp with the quick turnaround uh, heading to Winnipeg, but it was on the schedules. And so now a chance to just catch your breath, get a relief, actually get a day zero in there. I, I think it's completely beneficial for us and then those two new signings uh Jared Hewitt and Tyreek McAllister maybe just what you can tell me about them yeah I think McAllister has proven he's a he's a dynamic player Uh, he's got some returnability he definitely can carry the ball in the backfield Uh, started off in college as a receiver so uh, every now and again when players are willing to come up uh, you take a look at them and so you know at first glance they look great they look like they're in shape ready to go and uh, of course uh Hewitt uh He's, uh, he's tenacious, right? His tape speaks for itself. I know he spent some time in Seattle uh, with their ball club and, you know, watched him at Virginia Tech a little bit, very, very consistent. And, and so we'll see. So anytime you can, you can add value to your football team, you always look to do that. So that's what we're looking to do here. Following the game Friday, I asked Coach O, what was the message that was said to the team after the first half? And Coach O, being Coach O, he was tight-lipped about what was said. Today, he was asked if some of the leaders in the room had said something to spark the fire in the Ticats locker room, and this is what he said. Well, I think it started at rundown, right, where, where I go out with the team and then I leave, and they handle it. It's their football team. Uh, we'll go as they go. And so whatever leaders spoke, whatever words they said at that point, that's the beginning of the growth. Uh, The coaches set the expectations. The players are always set the standard. So if they're going to set a standard that's low, that's what we're going to hit, the low standard. If they set it's high, um, that's what it's going to be. The discipline and accountability can't all come from the coaching staff. The responsibility always will rest with me. I'm fine with that. But uh, the players are the ones that make make the plays, and they got got to make this thing go. So it's really what they said uh, is, is why I'm encouraged. That was Coach O following today's practice. Now Casey Sales, he had quite the night on Friday. Not only did he play his former team, a team he's won two Grey Cups with in their arena, he also had to step up on the offensive line after injuries plagued the Ticats on that O-line. Obviously, he isn't used to being an O-lineman. He's a defensive lineman. I asked him about what he thought when he was told to step up on the offense and what it was like playing the former team. Oh, it wasn't too bad. I mean, just kind of same thing that I've been kind of playing against in the last two years, kind of practice and such. Uh, um, kind of knew their pros and cons of each guy and kind of what the stuff that they were going to run. But um, they had a good game plan against us. And, uh, yeah, they ended up uh, coming out with the victory, unfortunately. But, um, but 
game was fine and uh, you know thought we still did well. Obviously, you know, pretty close to coming back there, but um, yeah, man, just couldn't couldn't get it done. And then some injuries happen on the, the old line there. Uh, you get the call to come in. What was the conversation like uh, before you went in? Uh, wasn't too much one. Uh, saw sacks go down. Um, and uh, obviously knew it was kind of a tight game. Needed to get a first down there. Um, had our equipment guy come over with a jersey, and so I ended up being double jerseyed up, and um, you know, just kind of had to go in there. And um, yeah, wasn't too nervous at all because just got to do it, right? So um, you know, I think it ended up ended up being fine, and only was I think three plays or so. So um, yeah, just kind of when your name gets called, and just kind of got to do what you got to do. So. The half on defense also much better than the first half. Mm -hmm. uh, what changed there? Uh, I think just kind of collected in the locker room and uh, you know, kind of kind of see what was going on. Just everyone catch their breath for a second, and um, after that, I think we just kind of got our more momentum. You know, you got Winnipeg that got all the veterans and uh, guys that have been there. You know, obviously it's a new, newer team here, so um, you know I think the first half was just kind of gelling together and just kind of um, just initially playing with each other. So um, yeah, you're going to have that the first first week or two, just kind of you know fusing in and gelling together. So um, yeah, after 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 half, just kind of. Got our breath together and you know, kind of got after a little bit more. So that was Casey Sales featuring a alarm that just would not shut up the entire time. So I apologize for that in the background. Now Duke Williams, he made his Ty Cats debut, finishing with three receptions for 54 yards, and he spoke to me about the tough start and getting in game number one. Um, we just had to slow the game down in our head. That's all it was. We know what type of team we got. We just got to put it together. You know that was last week, so. We're here to refocus and focus on Toronto. Um, it's football. You know, never get too comfortable. So attack the week as if we play Thursday or Friday. And once Sunday comes, we'll be ready to play. Um, his timing, his arm strength, and most importantly, like, like the knowledge he have of the game. Like, I've been in the league a, a while, and, you know, Mike Riley, I had Mike Riley, but both, but, but, like, have that, that potential to just be great. And I like the way he just tell us what it be and how he want things. And... I haven't had that in a minute, and once I see that, like that just make me go even harder for him. And, and I'm, whenever he's ready, I'm just here for him. And it was a tough game for all of us as a whole, but we we gonna get it together. It's the first game of the season. It's a lot of new um, pieces we have to put together, and we we have a lot of games left. And once we do that, we gonna be a tough team to stop. I mean, it was a lot of things on the field that was open, and um, that's part of the game. You, you make mistakes in the first half, and you go into halftime and, and have th th those type of talks. And that's what we did. That's how we was able to come back in the second half. We just made them, made them adjustments and came out the second half and executed, and everything played out how it was supposed to. At the end of the interview, Duke was asked about that upcoming game with Toronto, and he made it clear that this Ticats team is ready to go. Next week is no excuse of how we should perform. We, we started off slow. If we, if we could start off fast and do what we're supposed to do, we'd be a tough team to stop. Yeah, Toronto a good team. Yeah, they won a great cup last year, but this is a whole new year whole new team for us, and we just can't wait to put it together how we're supposed to. And I feel like we're going to be very dominant. And, and once we get on that type, of, that type of level, then the sky's the limit for us. That was Duke Williams following today's practice. Now another receiver I spoke to was Terry Godwin. And we spoke about that first game of the season, which happened to be his first ever season opener starting as a receiver in the CFL. And I also spoke to him about what it was like getting in that first full game with Bo Levi Mitchell. So Terry, your first... Season opening start. How did it feel out there to get in, to get in that first game of the season, get things kicked off here in 2023? I mean, the first game always exciting. You know, a lot of, a lot of emotions, a lot of energy flying around, and it just felt great. You know, to go out there and hit on and beat on somebody else and do it to somebody else instead of you know your own teammates in camp and stuff like that. So it felt great. It felt great. Playing a team like Winnipeg, I'm not an easy opponent. They came out flying out of the gates. But that second half, you came back to life. What did you notice switched with the team in the second half? Um, I mean, just like I'm pretty sure if you watch the game or know anything about the game, we kind of hurt ourselves against a good opponent. And with that being said, we had a lot of penalties that first half. And coming out of the second half, I mean, we made some minor adjustments, and we really didn't take that many penalties. And as you see, we can do a lot of good things without – hurting ourselves mm -hmm. and once we get over those obstacles those minor minor details I mean I feel like we'll be a great team a real great team 
you've played with Bo all training camp, but that's the first time you've played a full game with him. What did you notice about his play and being around him out there on the offense? I mean, practice game, Bo's the same. I mean, yeah, it was a lot of stuff out there that, as you see on TV, uh, uh, we didn't connect on a lot of attempts downfield, whether it was me or other guys. I mean, that's just part of the game. Some games is a hit or miss, and that was one of the games we got to go back to the uh, drawing board and see what's, what's next. And I mean, we live and learn from those mistakes, and I'm pretty sure we're going to come out next game this week, preparation, and just be on all 10. Now this week, you have the Argonauts, that rivalry matchup. Are you, what do you know about or what do you enjoy about this, this Toronto-Hamilton rivalry, <laughs> this QEW battle? Oh, man, I, since, since I've been here, I heard a lot, of, a lot of things about this rivalry. And, I mean, just by it being the other team up the street, I mean, it's going to be it's, – it, it's more so for bragging rights as far as the rivalry. And for us, I mean, it's an eight-point game, so you know that that means a lot for us. So going to this game is more than just a game for us. So mm-hmm. we're going to hear full throttle and just go out there and play Hamilton Tiger Cat ball. Now, with the nine days in between games, it's kind of abnormal. Yeah. Do you feel that kind of benefits you guys a bit to have that little bit of maybe not rest because you're practicing every day, but exactly. extra days of preparation? Oh, of course. I mean, there's always – you got you got either that one extra day or two extra days for you to go out there and either get better at film, learn your 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 plays or details even down further, learn them better, or just to get out there and get more familiar with your feeling of your areas. Whether it's your own special teams, defense, offense, you just being able to rely on the person next to you. Y'all get y'all communication downs and y'all just go through y'all calls and checks. So I mean that extra day or extra two days of preparation is always great, whether it's recovery, getting in your playbook or whatever it is. I mean, it's it's always something that you can do to get that upper edge on the next team with that extra day. You have a pretty pretty good veteran receiving core. What have you noticed about being around those guys over over the last little while? Oh man, just with with Duke being being added here, I mean it was it was tremendous because we already had Tim with the with the experience. Now you got another veteran receiver that's coming in with more even more experience. And I mean it's just it, it's great because we're talking all across the board. I mean if it's one side, it's with Duke and the his side, and then Tim and my side, or whether it's just them telling us what they've experienced or what they can see in like defenses or the holes that they would you know it's just it's that 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 the experience and football talk that you need from a veteran receiver or a veteran player. Mm-hmm. And now this weekend, this weekend you're on the road again, but then the following week, I know you're taking it one week at a time, but the yeah. following week you have that home opener here in Hamilton. Just looking forward a bit. I know it's a couple weeks away. Are you excited to get in that first home game finally after this two-game road trip? I mean, I feel like everybody's excited for their first home game. That's with any team. You're excited to come back and be at your own stadium and have an opening at your stadium and just be at that, you know, that home field advantage and just have your fans there. I mean, everybody's ready for that. I'm pretty sure if you play any sports, you're ready for that home game. But uh, like you said, we're taking it one week at a time and we're not looking that far that far just yet we're looking at this week with the Argos and I mean that's that's what's on our to-do list this week big thanks to Terry Godwin Duke Williams Casey Sales and of course Coach O for joining me on the show today the Ticats they are back at practice tomorrow morning as they prepare for the Sunday night battle of the QEW against the Toronto Argonauts that's all the time for me today we will talk to you next time on Ticats today